Hey there, welcome to Tree Marie Soapworks. I am Terry, and today we're going to be learning how to make this soap. Fraulein Winter may have been the first one to come up with this technique. She's very innovative and she's so talented. So if you want to take a look, I've included some of her social media sites in the description below. I learned this technique in Amy Warden's Soap Challenge. It was the technique we did in September of 2018, and I've always wanted to revisit it. I just love the look of those little drops. They are just so adorable, and they come out so neat. I can't say enough good things about Amy Warden's Soap Challenge. If you join the challenge and you join her Facebook group, there's a lot of troubleshooting going on and people help each other and we all want each other to succeed. So it's just a wonderful group and a lot of learning is going on. I will include information for her below too to her YouTube channel and also to the different challenge links. If you feel like you've learned something from me and I've helped you, please help me and give me that thumbs up and subscribe and comment below. All of that stuff helps me to show up in the rankings and that helps other people see my videos. And stay tuned to the end of the video where I give a little Tree Marie Soapworks news and also a little troubleshooting on what I would have done differently or what worked for me in this particular batch. I'm posting a recipe on my site for this video. It's going to include the actual amounts of things you use and all the ingredients and supplies you need and step-by-step -step instructions also linked to this YouTube video. And if you're interested in that, it will be for sale on my website and I'll offer links below. Okay, let's get started. I just start like I normally do with about a third to a half of my water weight in distilled water ice cubes. And then I top off the remaining water weight with cold distilled water. Next I measure the sodium hydroxide and if you've never made cold processed soap before, make sure that you watch some lye safety videos and understand the proper safety gear that you need to wear and how to treat lye. Check the description below and I have included a link to a lye safety video. Next I just carefully add the sodium hydroxide to the distilled water. Stir it in really well and make sure it's all dissolved. Make sure there's none on the bottom that kind of creates a crust because that's very hard to get dissolved later. Next I measure the sodium lactate. I used one teaspoon per pound of oils and I really like this ingredient because it makes a harder bar and it also makes the soap release from the mold much easier. Now it's totally optional but just to let you know it is a natural ingredient and really it's a liquid salt and is made from the fermentation of beets and corn so it's totally natural. Next I set these ingredients aside in a place that's well ventilated and free from any kids or pets. Before you get started measuring your hard oils, make sure that you note the weight of your bowl so that you can figure out how much batter to split off later on. First I start with measuring the palm kernel flakes. Now they have a higher melting point so that's why I do them first because then they can help to melt the other ingredients that have a lower melting point. Next I measure the coconut oil and the lard and I melt that until it's just barely melted but the mixture needs to be clear. That's how you tell if it's completely melted. While I'm melting those, I begin to measure the liquid oil, starting with the avocado oil, then the castor oil, and then finally the olive oil. Next, I measure the fragrance, and today I'm using a Moonlight Path duplicate that's from Elements Bath & Body. I really love this fragrance because for one, it doesn't discolor your batter at all, and also it is very slow moving, so it's a good one for when you're doing intricate designs. Now that the oils are melted, I'm going to add the cocoa butter. And this cocoa butter is from Brambleberry. It's cocoa butter pastilles. They're very easy to work with, but you can use any kind of cocoa butter. Next I'm going to prepare my colorants and for a recipe that you want to be slow moving, it's very good for you to pre-disperse your colorants so that you're not just mixing them in dry or having to stick blend them in because stick blending causes acceleration. So that's the reason why you usually see me pre-mixing my colorants. The colorants that I'm using today are all from Elements Bath and & Body and the first one I'm using is called Bejeweled and it is a new colorant that they have out. And that's a purple color and the next one is frosty orange gelato and then the final color is seafoam green and that's also a new colorant. I used all of these at a rate of one and a half teaspoons per pound of oil so I wanted them a little bit darker than the samples I have. 
For this recipe, I'm using squeeze bottles, so the squeeze bottles need extra in them because you can't just put the amount you're going to put in the mold in there because you would never get that out of the squeeze bottle. So for this recipe, I'm using an 8 bar mold and I'm making enough batter for a 10 bar mold, so I just need to have another mold ready for my excess batter. Next I prepare my white colorant, which is titanium dioxide. And I've pre-mixed that at a rate of one part titanium dioxide to three parts of oil. And I've completely dispersed that. So that's a time saver when you're using a lot of titanium dioxide. Now I'm going to prepare the squeeze bottles. I use these liners that are the sealed air packaging that you get in your packages. And I just cut the top off. And I learned this tip from the Soap Challenge Club. I use a chopstick to get them inside there and I use the blunt end because one time I used the other end and I poked a hole in there so that's no good. Next I make extensions for the tips of the squeeze bottles. This tip was also from the Soap Challenge Club. These are 7 milliliter pipettes and I'm just cutting them at the 3 milliliter line. And then I cut a fringe around the edge of the end I just cut. Next I cut an inch or two and a half centimeters off the other end and that leaves the opening at about a fourth of an inch or seven millimeters. Before you begin taping anything together, make sure the surfaces are clean. Just use rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol to wipe off the tips first and then tape them. And I used electrical tape for this. It seems to be the most sticky. Okay, now that everything's prepared, I add the liquid oils to the melted hard oils. Next, add the sodium lactate to the cooled lye water. I soap between the temperatures of 85 and 95 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 29 to 35 degrees Celsius. I find this is a happy medium between soaping at room temperature, which sometimes gives you steric spots and causes your hard oils to start to solidify, and then soaping too warm and that causes acceleration. I've strained the lye water into the oil mixture and I just stick blend until an emulsion is reached and that is when I take the stick blender out and I look at it and I see if the soap is breaking apart on the bell of the stick blender. And if it's starting to get kind of a wavy look, that means it's not emulsified yet. It needs to have a thin coating on it and it needs to be a thin even coating. And by pulling the stick blender out and just looking at that soap for a few seconds and seeing if it starts to separate, that's what I'm checking for. Next, I split off 8% of my batter into each of the three pitchers. I tell you how to do this in many of the other videos, so I'm not going to explain it here. But if you don't want to do the math, I have figured it out in the recipe, and I also tell you how to figure it out in my recipe that's for sale on my website. The remaining batter will be your white batter, and the next step is just to add your colorant. I just stir the colorant in by hand since it's all been pre-mixed, you can do that. Now, if you didn't mix your titanium dioxide ahead of time, it doesn't mix very well and you do have to stick blend, which causes problems because it accelerates that. And titanium dioxide does tend to accelerate batter anyway. So you want to have it ready ahead of time so that you don't need to stick blend. Add 8% of the fragrance to the three pitchers and then the remaining to the white batter. Next, stir the fragrance in until it's completely mixed. And at this point, we are just going to wait for the batter. And I know a lot of people would stick blend at this point and get it to a better trace, but I find that once you do that, it really speeds up the batter. Now, I waited a little too long because I kind of get bored. This actually took like 15 minutes to thicken up to the proper trace. 
So my batter got thick on me, especially the white, and that's because titanium dioxide does accelerate a little bit. I should have been paying more attention, but actually I think this worked in my favor. This batter was definitely still pourable, and I would probably call it a medium trace. I had to hurry to get it into the bottles. We are starting to come up on the action phase of this soap, so pay attention here, it happens very quickly. Here I'm just pouring the batter into the mold and I tilt it slightly so I can avoid introducing air bubbles into the mold. And then I loosen it up a little bit with a spatula before I use my squeeze bottles. I squeeze a little out ahead of time just to make sure there aren't any air gaps in the extension line. I have a planned spot for where I'm going to start and I believe this one is the center bottom. And you take the tip of your bottle and insert it to the top of where you want your little drops to be. And I'm bending down to eye level so that I can see where the tip of my bottle ends up. And then I start squeezing and I'm showing you this in real time so you can see how slow I'm moving the bottle. Now the slower you move the bottle, the bigger your drops are going to be. And I'm really curious about making bigger drops yet, so I might try that. I have some ideas. So I just line the next one up to where I want the top of that one and slowly go across, squeezing as I go. And then I just repeat for the last color. And this last color, I went a little slower just because I was thinking maybe I was going too fast on the other ones. So you notice that the purple one came out a little bit bigger. And now I'm just making a fun design on the top. I didn't really have anything planned, but I wanted to use up a little more of my colored batter. When I'm dragging the chopstick through there, I make sure that I'm only just barely touching the surface of the soap enough to drag it. Because when you cut your bar, you want to make sure that it doesn't have much impact when you're looking at the face of the bar. You can see I was trying to decide whether to make those final lines in the bar, and I decided to do it because I thought it would make each individual bar look better. Next, I cover this batch and I put it in the oven that's preheated to the lowest temperature. Now, I only preheat it for like 30 seconds, so don't preheat the oven while you're making the soap. Just turn it on a short time and get that little initial heat. And then when you put your soap in the oven, just turn it off, turn the oven light on, and leave it there until you wake up in the morning. Now, I usually shut the oven light off before I go to bed just so it's completely cooled down when I wake up in the morning and I can take it out. This recipe was a little soft to cut the first day. I should have waited, but I was just in a rush to see how my drops looked. This is my second attempt at this design, and I'll let you know what I learned from the first batch to the second batch. In my first batch, I didn't cut the tips off of my pipettes, and in the second batch, I did cut them off one inch. In the first batch, the little drips came out much smaller, so I blame it on that, and I also blame that on my trace being thinner, and also my hand movement from the front to the back of the mold being faster. So I feel like I got what I wanted when I did the second batch. So that trace was thicker, I would say medium trace, and also I moved my hand slower from the front to the back. So it depends on what you're going for, but that should help you get the kind of drop that you desire. I also changed where I put the drips in the second batch, and I like that better. The second one I had a center one, and the other one I didn't really have a center one, and I just feel like it came out better the way I did it the second time. So you can learn things from one batch to the next, and just really study how you could change it, how you could make it better, or how you liked it and what you want to repeat, and just things like that. It's good to write that down. It's good to just think it through and keep track. It really accelerates your learning when you can add on to what you know and remember it for the next time. So what do you think about this design? Do you think you could do it? I really don't think it was very hard. It's just a matter of making up the squeeze bottles and having that tip extension and waiting on your batter. Wait till it's the proper consistency before you get started. Don't get in a rush and use the stick blender. Also, make sure you have a plan before you start. Draw this out on paper, color it, or just label the drips of what color you want to make them. 
When I used to skydive, we used to say plan the dive and dive the plan. On the ground, we would decide what we're going to do. It was called relative work, and we would do these different formations in the air, and you have to kind of get the muscle memory. So sometimes on these, I even actually did do a dry run on this, and it helps to kind of know how fast you want to go. So plan the dive and dive the plan. What do you think about the colors? Right now, I'm actually leaning toward the colors of the first one, but these on the second one are the colors I was going for. I wanted to use secondary colors. I love the combination of green, purple, and orange, and you see them around Halloween time. They're really pretty, and these I wanted to do pastel because of springtime, but when I look at that first one I did, and it had that, it was called crimson, I believe, that crimson really came out good, and I would actually lower the usage rate. I used it at one and a half teaspoons per pound of oils, and I think it bled a little bit, so I would just lower the usage rate back to one teaspoon per pound of oils. I was going to tell you the story about why I've been gone so long and some things that happened, but I'm running out of time, so I think I'll have to tell you another time, but it really just boils down to I was kind of overdoing it and I just needed the time to rest and I also got sick over Christmas and once I kind of got out of the swing of things, it took me longer than I thought to get back into it. So I'm going to try for two videos a month, but possibly I could be working up to more than that, but my family's all home right now because of the COVID-19 and so it's kind of fun to be hanging out with them too so we'll see how this goes. Thank you so much for watching and sticking with it until the end and if you learned something today please give me a thumbs up and like and subscribe and also leave a comment and don't forget I have this recipe up for sale on my website so take a look and everybody take care and be safe and I will see you back next time.